The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good Monday morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. How about yourself? Very good. Had an absolutely spectacular weather-wise weekend. We nice. deserve that. Nice. And uh, we're having a little great. bit of rain. We got a little bit of rain yesterday. Maybe not much as as much rain as they forecast, but this morning a little rainy today. But that's all right. We'll take it. We need some of that moisture from all that heat that we get drying up, so that works as well occasionally, and it cools things off a little bit for us in Florida too. Good. Uh, I had a question for you. What are you looking for this very uh, first full week of the? Uh, July month. Yeah, um, there's a lot going on, right? I mean, headline-wise, the big one out there, Deutsche Bank, not really the big one, but getting talked about a lot for sure. Quite a restructuring. They're dealing with some woes. And just to pull up the chart as we talk about it, Deutsche really struggling. So we have the market to surmise it. Dow down about 108 right now. S&P is off about 13. NASDAQ off about 67. We'll jump over to Apple in a moment as they are getting hit in a downgrade this morning. But Deutsche down about 6.8% and putting that on a daily. Uh, it is a rough one down there in that restructuring the market really not liking it uh, and Apple you know these tech stocks Basil it's interesting this Nasdaq Apple down 2.6 percent and putting this on a five minute um, let it low but quite an acceleration right off the opening bell with Apple getting hit and some of the suppliers as well getting hit on that downgrade that they may see some some slowing woes in their iPhone sales and so I wonder how that hits the market in terms of those technology stocks. And then, of course, we have Jerome Powell speaking uh, to Congress this week as well, which should be interesting to see what he has to say. As the market, it seems like kind of factoring in the jobs number that we had on Friday still, digesting that and how that's going to play for the July 31st Fed. Um, so I think if you can figure that out, you can figure out the market. And so it'll be interesting to see what Powell has to say this week as he goes to Congress. So let me just show you something. I showed this to my subscribers over the weekend to my opening call uh, subscribers. I almost always show this on weekends. It's coming up right now. And this is what I call the triple yield weekly chart. It is um, essentially the 30 year. Let me just get it right here. There it is. So this, I'll make it bigger so you see we're looking at the one chart, not all the others, and Perfect. one in the middle. Okay, and this is a weekly chart. And really what I've been saying for quite some time is, in fact, let me open this up and you will see something very interesting. Look at this. The white is the, uh, this is the TYX, the 30-year T-bond yield okay. right there. It's a weekly chart. The brown is the TNX, that is the, 10-year yield. Nice. That's the T-note yield. So it's a T-bond yield, T-note yield, and the five-year T-note yield, the F of VX, the Cyan one. 30, 10, and, and 5. Perfect. Right. And what's really interesting, I'll take this line right here, this horizontal purple line, and you can see we've been here many times before. Look how many times we've been here. Look, there's the close on, well, you can go right to today. It's current. And we've been here. The white chart, it says you go back to 2000, well, the whole October, uh, May, October period of 2016. Yeah, we're back near the election of 16, right? So I think that it's really important to keep in mind that it is the market's interpretation of what they think Powell will do, or let's say the, the Fed, not just Powell, but it's the Fed. And if you look at it, if you do the MRI of the patient, if you look at the X-ray of the patient, we've been here. So it's really the uh, the market is, when the market is a little vulnerable, which is what I was telling subscribers to my opening call, I said, be careful. Last week, I said, we're getting real close to what I call in Chapman Wave methodology, peak D, E, or F. This is the th fourth or fifth highest peaks from a buy, mo buy signal at the bottom. And um, this is where you expect that there could be some digestive phase. So none of this is a surprise. If you look at the chart formation, uh, about two weeks ago, I said, I'm anticipating that bond yields are going to have a bit of a bounce. I think it's still a bounce. I still think that the big picture has us 
in what I had called 20 years or so or more, the Japanization of our bond yields, meaning they'll go down to almost zero. Well, that's what we've been doing for the last number of years. And so nothing really has changed. It's just that the market was a little vulnerable right now. So you can talk about what will the Fed do. But if you look at it, the Fed it's kind of, I mean, the Fed is kind of stuck. You, you're right here in the middle. They're not, actually, they're not stuck. They don't have to do anything. That's what I meant. The market might just take care of the little bumps and grinds. Yeah. What will happen is if at some point you really get inflation, in other words, yields start to scream, the 30-year, which is trading at 2.5 uh, right now, starts to go 3.455. That was high of November of 2018. Then, I think, and, and if you look at wheat and corn and soybeans, if they really start to push much higher and crude oil, then you're talking about the genies out the box and inflation will rear its ugly head. And when it does that, it does it really quickly. But I, we're not there right now. So I, I, I just think this is normal market conditions. Find something <laughs> to be afraid of, and there it is. But if you're really looking at um, overall market, We've had a really good run. You just need a bit of a timeout. You know, we've been long since June the 3rd, the latest long position we've had in the Dow. Took a little profit um, on Friday. I said at the opening, I said, just take something off. We're getting close to a peak D. Um, hey, I, I don't see anything too different right now. When you talk about Apple, well, if you look at the whole XLK, that is the uh, S&P Tech Spider Fund, uh, it has gone to that leg D. Let me just put that in. I forgot to do that over the weekend. Put it in C. And D says ready for a bit of a breather. But look at the spectacular move. It's gone to a new all-time high. This is now leg C in the weekly. I mean, we're talking about in the 57 area back in December and now trading uh, 22 points higher. You would expect that there's some kind of a breather. So sure. No, I'm, just, been... I'm, just try, I'm just trying to put it into the perspective uh, of what I'm looking at and saying nothing is too unusual right now. We've had a fabulous move up, need a bit of a digestive phase. And it's interesting. We get CPI data, I believe, on Thursday at 8.30 in the morning as that inflation. So we're going to get Powell. Is it Tuesday and Wednesday? At least it's Wednesday. I believe he's speaking to... The Senate on one day, this is a biannual that he goes before Congress and maybe the House one day. Um, so you get that. You get the CPI data on Thursday. And I assume that all that's going to play into what he's going to do. But I agree. I mean, the run's been spectacular. We're almost, uh, we're not almost, we're basically at highs. We're we were. At highs, yeah. yeah. All time highs. Yeah. 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 Not this even is, basically. Uh... We're at all time highs across the board. And um, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, Apple, before they pulled back, they, they think they were up at almost a $950 billion company back. Basel right up. I think that Incredible. Their, yeah, their price tag for a trillion, um, excuse me, a trillion, yeah, uh, 950 billion is somewhere around 207. So they just, uh, you know, pulled back. I think they were at about 203 to start trading. Uh, and if you, if you look at the chart, 233 was the high back in uh, 2018. Yep. And then it drops very sharply. It goes to 170, but it rallies back to 205. Just uh, Friday, and now it's showing at 199. If you look at the chart, it says Apple's a mature company. It isn't the kind of growth stock that it used to be, but it's really a very solid, good company. I mean, I, and compl I completely agree. I was just to say it's amazing for how stable of a company they are. That run that they had from the high of 230, the low of Christmas Eve, to the highs that we just made on Friday. Folks, Basil and I will be right back. Come on back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got the Dow off about 90 points. S&P is negative by 10 right now. NASDAQ negative by 60 points. Basil, just to finish up on Apple, because it is interesting, you know, I just put some Fibonacci numbers, just even on that recent run that it had from the beginning of June, going from about $170 up to $205. Uh, you know, if you even look at a 38% retracement, you're talking about 192 bucks, more than $7 from where we're trading at right now. And that's just from June, let alone how crazy this chart looks if you pull it back to that low of January 3rd at $142. So pretty reasonable. That was a round, a round number, $142. That, that, uh, you that like those round me. numbers. Yeah, I love those round numbers. You do. Those highs. Uh, the <laughs> fundamental aspect of Apple is always interesting. I'm a huge Apple fan myself. I have an 8 Plus uh, in terms of an iPhone. Had it for about a year and a half. Uh, my home button, ironically enough, is having some problems right now, so I got to get it fixed. But you can see how the, the, the cycle of needing these phones is, is so much less in terms of how often you need them. Uh, the technology is just not really differentiating itself as they used to in those two-year cycles. And so it comes down to whether they can maybe transfer that revenue model to recurring revenue, cloud, and et cetera. And that, uh, that downgrade this morning was saying, uh, that might not be as easy as you think, and those iPhone sales are going to continue to struggle. So we'll see how that hits that. So, company. yeah, it's interesting you say that because um, when I saw that uh, sign flash by when I was uh, over at the fitness center this morning, I, I thought to myself, that's interesting because there is, there must be a lot of people like myself who just do basic functions on their cell phone all the time, but it's the same thing over and over and over. Definitely. It's nothing terribly complicated, but it's just you need it, yeah. but you only need it for certain things. Right. I Email is no great need... to have, right? I mean, the yeah, basics, I mean, yeah. I Internet, when you need to I mean, hit nothing. it up. Um, right. the, the few apps that you might like, maybe use something for your fitness, right? Maybe you have a, a step tracker, a fitness tracker. Uh, guess what? I mean, a new phone isn't going to make that fitness tracker much better. Yeah. Now, yeah, they're making advances and they might have, you know, the new watches, the new iWatches have heart rate, right? And they can talk. So there's ways, but I agree that on the most... That, that is more part of the uh, legacy. That's more part of the, how can we put it? It is the 
the function of getting some residual every month so that there's some income coming in, and that's going to be really important. So I like yeah. to look at Apple now more, and I've been saying this maybe for about two years. I said, look at Apple not so much as a growth company in the old-fashioned sense with, when Jobs was around, that there was just a new innovation coming in that was so stupendous that people would line up for blocks and sure. blocks to get it isn't like that anymore, but what they will probably do is try to get that that income stream that comes in uh, month by month, and then the health care, I think that's going to be huge for Apple. But that's, yeah. that's all part of That's what I mean by a, a very... I always I talk about Apple as if it's like the General Motors of the 1920s. Sure. It is a core. It'll be around probably for a long time. It is a, it is a well-structured sophisticated company and they now to inno they, they need to innovate in ways of getting um, the pie bigger every month like Apple Not TV so much, right exactly as in yeah, opening you, up you content know for the people that they already have and, and and monetizing that and it needs to it needs to kick in and it needs to be a, a desired product it's tough, I mean, man. I agree themselves. with everything you're saying, but it's so yeah. tough. You saw the reaction to when they announced that Apple TV, right? They had right. stars. Oh, they had stars of plenty. They had Steven Spielberg saying he's going to direct movies for them. And that was not enough because the amount of money that you have to spend to compete with the likes of Netflix, and then you have Disney announcing theirs for, the what was it, $6, $7 a month. Disney's going to be taken in for all of their um, items that they offer. And, uh, and I agree with the health aspect. I do not own an iWatch. I've thought about getting one mostly for the fact of that kind of health tracking type deal. Um, and so they could have a lot of potential there if they were able to get their products monitoring people in that health aspect and then somehow capitalize on that. But as a, as a fan, I just don't see myself buying a ton of phones on the regular from them anymore. You know, I love my A+. Plus. It's great. It's perfect. I really don't need another one. I just need it to keep working properly. Um, you know, maybe it has some battery problems, etc. but I don't need to go out and spend 800 or $1,000 every two years anymore for that upgraded technology. And that's what you see in the chart. The yeah. chart is saying is that a fabulous move, a little too much in too short a period of time. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it just stays in this range between the uh, low 200s and probably 212, 215 as a high, and maybe not even down to 180 as a low, but it just stays in this for a little while before before they trigger some kind of real affection for a new Apple product, and, and that's really important. And the PE reflects that, I, just you, I mean, the PE sitting at about 16.7, so nothing too outlandish for a company that still, you know, likes to talk about that, you know, they don't talk about it, but that maybe they're gonna get into the car business, right? I mean, maybe, so there's some things that could have, you know, some growth in there that probably should be factored in um, down the line. And, and that's kind of what you see. I mean, even look at Netflix. If I go to the chart of Netflix, did I hit the wrong button? Right, let me go here. And FLX, there we go. Um, Netflix hasn't made a new all time high. 423 was the high back in June of last year. And it uh, takes, a, takes a dive and goes down to, I think it was at 237. Let me just double check. No, no, it was higher. 231. So it goes down yeah. to 231. Oof. Let's face it, 423 to 231 <laughs> for a for one of your leading fang stocks, that's a big hit. Yeah, for a company everybody loves, right? You don't really hear right. a lot of negative talk about it, yeah. So it's come back very strongly, and it's gone to the most recent high, peaked in the weekly chart of uh, 385.99, just missed by a penny a round number. And and then it pulls back yet again. It goes to the 330s, and now it's back at 377. Uh, it's, it's acting very well, but it isn't a leader. It, in other words, the fang stocks themselves um, Amazon is probably the one that's the closest to its all-time high, and there's there's a good reason for that because they're still innovating. Oh, but yeah. the patterns actually are very much the same, except that Amazon's in a V-shaped pattern is is a stronger pattern than the others. But they've been in a what is it September to what are we now? This is July. This yeah. is what an eight nine month consolidation. Um, I, I I think uh, that is telling us that there's been new leadership in this last rally and that there's a chance that the FANG stocks will be back, but I think it's a little later in the year, then they really kick in. But at this point, I think uh, 
they're digesting massive gains and it's taking quite a while. Yeah, Amazon's sitting, I just pulled it up, at an 81 P.E. ratio, which doesn't actually seem that bad for a company like Amazon, which so much, so much growth down the line. I mean, they're just building out, it feels like, their own delivery system. Um, they're going to have flying vehicles dropping off packages at your house, Basil, in no time. You know, I mean, there's... Yeah, I, yeah, I'm wondering about that because when you get into it, They've already put uh, here in Newton, Massachusetts, in the Garden City, they've put in uh, restrictions, restrictions for noise. Not yeah, okay. that anyone's listening, but the noise is there. And those drones can be really annoying. Sure. They can be loud. Sure, they're so little I'm flies kind of flying around everywhere, right? Absolutely. I mean, seriously, yeah. So I don't think it's going to be quite as soon and quite as easy as it. in some places maybe it'll work. But I think in the rural areas, maybe in the city, oh, yeah. I, I can't see it at all. I think what you'll see ahead of that is um, driverless, and I don't even want to call them like vehicles, robots. you know, those yeah. little like pods that they've shown that'll drop everything yeah. off. Um, I'd say that's the first step. But I agree. When you start talking about I joke with friends, sometimes my phone can't even work for an autocomplete for a word that's very basic. <laughs> and somehow we're going to have self-driving cars in a few years uh, we yeah. got a few years yeah we got a few years basil i'll be right back folks come on back with us hi folks tom o'brien here if you'd like to get my daily newsletter market insights then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial every morning by 9 30 i send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets currencies and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. Dow off 117. S&P's off about 15. NASDAQ off about 68 points right now hanging out. Uh, Basil, can we jump over to the gold contract? We got some action in gold as it continues this morning. Um, we made it up to about 1410. We're trading back right now. And let me just put, I had this on a daily. And again, just kind of going to the trend where quite a run on all markets since like that beginning of June, whether it's late May and gold, but kind of took off in the beginning of June as well. And when you start looking, the run has just been so dramatic. We went from about 1270 in gold at that time all the way up to above 1440. You kind of have a double top, which is a little bit worrisome here if you're a bull. Um, but hasn't even really reached back. I mean, 1377 would be a 38% retracement. You're kind of sitting at about 23%, and that is just from that run of 1270. And what are you looking at, Basil? I'm interested with the peaks, with just how volatile, really, gold has been trading, um, you know, recently, on the up and the down. So there are, there are a couple of things that I, that's going on as far as I'm concerned with the gold. and The buying, one never really knows exactly what it is, but it seems to me that it fits very nicely if you think of it as a fear trade. In other words, the whole geopolitical scene kind of sure. exacerbates, gets kind of worse, and it kind of cools down. But I, because silver should have been, if the two were going together as a, a metals play, yeah, which then silver, not, wouldn't right? be, yeah, silver wouldn't be as weak as it is. Yeah. It really is weak if you look at that monthly. So my, my suspicion is you, you've, it's so interesting. I decided about uh, maybe it's four months. Yes, yeah, maybe it's about four months ago. It might, it might be more. Time flies when you're having fun. It so does, I'm not man. sure. Maybe maybe it was four months ago. I said no. Like it was actually a little bit more. And I remember thinking, wait a minute. I'm getting such unusual action with the dollar being strong and gold sometimes being strong. I have a theory that you can go back and look at historically what happens. Every year, maybe two to three weeks, a few times a year, gold and the dollar, instead of moving in counterpoint, meaning they're going in opposite directions, not the same percentage, but just direction-wise, they go together. Um, and it's just an aberration. It's the way cycles work. Sure. It's nothing. I don't think it's more than that. But my, my uh, belief has been over the past, I really think maybe it's about six months, that gold is one thing. The dollar represents something else, and yields represent something else. They come together every once because cycles can overlap. But if you think of it this way, the dollar, to my mind, is representing the U.S. economy, and it is the currency of strength because this is the economy of strength. So I've made it as simple as possible. One of the reasons why, for subscribers, we've been long since April of um, 2018, back at 90, and we remained long because even last week was a bit of a surprise for the. Oops, I went to the the downside of the dollar. Even last week, the dollar ran right up to a, a channel. Now I know you asked about gold, but I'm trying to put them into perspective. Sure. It, it ran right up to channel resistance at 97.44. This is the dollar index, not the uh, futures, but they travel in the same direction, and um, so and it's in leg C, and it should make a leg D, and that should break above the resistance line. And if I squeeze the one, first of all, if you look at the monthly on the right, so it's the daily chart on the left, in the middle is the weekly. I'll just squeeze it a little bit to make it so you can see it more in contact. You can see that cup formation. I always like to look at cup formations. He has a second one. So last week's strength was a very pleasant surprise to, to me because I really thought that the sharpness could continue a little bit, especially when gold had a couple of good pops. Now, this is going to be interesting. If you look at the monthly chart of the dollar, it's held the black line, the 14-period moving average. It's held the green line, the 9-period moving average. The MACD is good. The stochastic is at 86%, and that's very good. So now the reason why I'm saying to you, I'm trying to separate and give my reasoning. So this is now... Um, an economic, geopolitical um, icon, American icon. And of course, yesterday we won the soccer, so it kind of fits we in sure nicely did. with that. <laughs> so this is to me, the dollar is still holding very well. I would prefer if it starts to make leg D and goes into the 98.50, okay. 99 area in July, because that will clear it up for me. It will say dollar really is acting well. Now let's go to gold. Gold. And for many people, even even the the gold bulls, the actual move up 
four weeks ago, that big, strong signal, the right there that broke out of the resistance, the resistance in the continuous contract of 1361 back in the week of the 22nd of February. We went right through that. Now, in the travel wave methodology, if this is what I call a cup and ladle breakout in gold, and the MACD in the weekly chart is so strong, the stochastic's at 81%, not great, but it's good. This says it should go to a leg C and a leg D. That takes it way into the 1450s, 1460s, actually. So let's go one step at a time. This pattern that I put a rectangle in, oh, quite a, quite a, as we're making that peak F, I said, I think we're going to be trading in this range because it's a pattern that's very familiar. It's like a, in classical, terms of technical analysis it's like a, a, a flag pole and here's the flag but it's, it's a rectangle flag sure. now let me show you something just pattern wise look at this if i take you to the bonds this is the tlt look at this pattern it's the same thing that was a pt look how long we've lasted in this rectangle formation so my point here is that rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patients. They can go sideways. If you don't get, especially at a peak F in the Chapman wave, if you don't get an immediate breakdown under these key moving averages with the MACD turning down sharply negative, with stochastic probably going now to 66, but it really should be at 40-something, it says that there's buying. It doesn't mean say buying enough to break out, but it says buying enough to hold. So I'm looking at this, and I think if patterns repeat, this sideways consolidation with another pop to the upside, just about 14, 42, 90, I'm expecting something like that. And it's saying that gold, for whatever reason, and my reasoning actually is that it's part of this whole geopolitical fear process. Gold is historically a currency of fear. Yeah, that's part of it. But this time is a little different in that if you look at the, um, if we go to something like the GLD, which is the gold index, which follows, it maps out the same as gold because it trades at a tenth the price. That's a little different to if you go to the XAU. And the XAU, look at this. The XAU, oh, I, I did note, I thought I notated this. I guess I lost the notation. It has the same move, but this time you've got gold stocks and the gold contract moving in unison and that's the reason why i think we've got a high level consolidation this is good action but i do think that the dollar at some point a little later this summer will break to the upside and that's when i think gold has a deeper correction but as a move to explain it I, technically the way i've done it now that's the only way i can really explain it and say this time is a little different the reason why it's holding is other times either the gold con the, the gold um like the H HUI, the gold stocks themselves were moving up higher. Oh, I meant to go to the GDX. So I, I know all those symbols, and all of a sudden I lost the track. It's the GDX. Look, the GDX okay. did break out yeah. in unison. I think that's a good sign. Yeah, I mean, with the, what I always look at that, too, is just uh, as interest rates are plummeting, man. You know, you're talking about a 10% two-year. We'll pull it up. I mean, I just took a look. If you just uh, take your $1,400 as opposed to an ounce of gold, what do you have in 10 years at that 2% versus maybe you hold that gold? We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got Dow hanging around 135 in the negative right now. S&P is negative 15. NASDAQ negative by 70. Not too much action so far. Uh, finishing up that conversation, Basil, just taking a look at it. So I just pulled up a compound interest calculator just out of curiosity. I said, what would you get if you took that $1,400, which is basically where gold is trading at right now? You put it in for 10 years. You gave yourself the 2% interest that the 10-year is trading at right now for a yield at least. And you're looking at about $1,700. So the decision you make, right, is that what's the more profitable scenario in the long run of taking that $1,400 and investing it in a 10-year or taking that $1,400 and putting it in gold? And there's many other options. But people, some of those you're making that comparison. They're all intertwined. And uh, I, I, I like that probability when you get down at 2% and you have gold at $1,400. I just pulled this back on a long-term chart of gold. You know, that high back there, it's amazing. It's all the way back in 2011 now at 1923. You're sitting at 1399, 1400 on the dot as we speak. And 10 years in the future, do I think gold could be sitting at 1700? Yeah, I think there's a pretty realistic situation that gold is 1700 so or just, much higher. But just to emphasize that what you're really saying is that gold has no income so it has to be the capital gain oh, and you right. you you are yes. trading off ca potential capital don't know since so potential capital For sure. capital gain to a guaranteed income and i believe um now i can just do things anecdotally when it comes to something like uh, um, people in, that i know that i play tennis with uh, so you, let's just say there are a lot of people at the courts who uh, play that I, uh, I play with in my, my uh, range. Sure. So it's call it between the ages of uh, the 50s, 60s, maybe even 70s. Sure. Right? Money in the market, so, I'm sure, right? Whether they're retired, semi-retired. Right. Yes. And a lot of these people have been in the market almost all their lives, okay. uh, all their adult lives. They've had something in the market. They are still a lot that since the shakeup of 2008, 2009, that e either tiptoed back in or the ones who were lucky enough not to be, didn't know what to do, just held and said, you know, we think maybe the market will be coming back. But boy, we're terrified. They've been fortunate because the market not only has come back, but it's come back even stronger. But the ones who got out, and there are a lot of people that I've spoken to over the years who did get out at, at least a chunk of money 
of which they've not put back a chunk of money, they've put back much less. Now we're talking about something very different. Now I look at you and I say to you, all right, Tommy, what, what was that you just said? You said you know, 10-year, it can get from the 14s to the 17s, or you could put it in gold. Do you think that they're going to take a risk and put it into gold? I don't think so. Maybe not at 2%, um, but I think if the rates continue to get cut, that, uh, you know, 1.5%, 1.75%, and that's, I think, what may have picked up on that run from the beginning of June. So now it brings me exactly to the point that I wanted to make on. I'm pleased you said that, because uh, let me just go to the TLT. I always have to remember what I typed in here. What was it called? It's called, um, I've got it right here on the left. It says, oh, Tina. An expression I heard a couple of months ago, and I thought, what is Tina? And then someone said, oh, yeah, Tina. Um, the low rates are forcing Tina. I said, what's Tina? There is no alternative. So okay. now we get to a picture that says, I think there are a lot, and I don't mean a lot, meaning just amongst people I know, but from what I've read, from, my lesson, from what I listen to, from the ads that I hear of so many um, investment, um, there are so many... Uh, dinner for free to come to an investment seminar. There's a growth of that. So I'm looking at this and thinking to myself, okay, I've seen this scenario before. When does it happen? It happens as the market's starting to improve and you've had a lot of volatility. Then you can say, oh, with all this volatility, imagine, uh, you know, um, what happens if we go into another 50% decline? So the, the fear is out there. So now the reality is, I think a lot of people have been forced to go back into the market because there really is no alternative. But at the same time, they've got like one foot in and one foot out the door. Yeah. They're really not that sure. So when you bring up uh, the maybe the something like a 10-year with a guaranteed very small, but at least it's a, a, a dividend that you're getting, yes. and oh. or the risk of gold, my thinking here is that I would not be surprised if we've got a split, and this could be where majority of older investors, for the first time that they can ever recall, have a foot in many doors. And that would be smart in my book. That's kind of the approach I would take, which is probably why that, you know I ran through that example in saying, yeah, you could have both, right? I mean, because you could that, have... that is giving you one a fixed and one the right. alternative. You could have of both, right? Capital appreciation. Yeah, because that makes sense. you know, do I see gold at a thousand dollars in ten years? No, I don't. I mean, that would be a, I don't know what it would you know would happen for the 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 amount of people in the world to grow over that time, right? The economy to Maybe grow, to inflation to to it. come up. Yeah, right. Um, and so. As opposed to, and just like you're saying, you see the market that is so high right now. Could you get a pullback over three, four years? Yes, you better acknowledge that that's possible. You know, do I think it's going to happen? No, not for three or four years. But you better pull up a long-term chart of the S&P if you don't think at the highs that we're at and the run we just had that we could see that. And then you could take a year or two to get back to that level or something. So diversifying yourself away from the market and still having a foot in all those doors would probably be a pretty profitable that that would be my take on things I mean it really would with the run that we've had and especially I brought it up before we're coming into an election we're coming into an election that's that's gonna be rough no matter who you are or what you believe and so the market might be a little bit worried at the highs that we're at in terms of how that will affect um, things over the next 12 to 16 months until we figure out who wins in 2020 on top of everything else we have going on with the so, Fed and so forth so here's the other thing have a look at this chart. This is the S&P. Where was it? Uh, when, did, when did Trump come in? It came in, uh, it was November the 9th, 2000, and the election was in 16. So That's right way there. on the right side, yeah. There right. it is. So right there, okay. Yeah. In that yellow oval that was yep. chop, chop, chop for many months. Sure. So you go from 1810. That's $1,810. I didn't want to talk about the year 1810 when, when uh, I think uh, just before uh, Chopin was born. This is 18, or, or, or Napoleon was uh, invading different countries. 1810 is the price, February of 2016 was the low. So that, when was, so wait a minute, the election. Yep. You so the election was in November. 
No, no, it must have been. Wait a minute. Why, why yeah. is this? Where are you looking? November of 16. So it's right after the. There's a, yeah, there's so, a, there's a red bar so, in there. I can even pull it if you yeah, like. There it is. Yeah, that's this little red bar. Yes. What I was looking at is that the low of the S&P was in February at 1810. Sure. Yes. But then you get the elections and ever since then so let's talk about the elections you've gone from 2192 to 2974 isn't that interesting i mean and it's you know, especially the interesting i think after the run that it had preceding that right from well, like that, the lows a, of 2010 the Obama run absolutely there's Look at actually this spectacular like run. There's, there's that pause you circled but man it's a brief pause and a huge upward trend we'll be right <laughs> back to finish this conversation folks I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow negative 140, S&P's negative by 17, NASDAQ negative by 71. And Basil, just finishing that up, I always like checking out the Fibonacci retracements and just kind of where they fall. And man, if you ever go from the low of 2009 um, up to the run that we had of about 3,000, so you're going from about 665 in the S&P's to basically 3,000, a 38% retracement, which on a lot of things could be a healthy retracement, is 2,100. So you're talking about 800 S&P points, 860 S&P points. Under the December low. Oh, yes, for sure, yeah. right, exactly, which is remarkable. And then, you know, if you just go off 
the lows that we had in like 2015, so a much more reasonable, smaller time frame, which I don't think would be too right because you really never got a pause. You got about a pause for a year, maybe, maybe in two, time. that consolidation. Um, yeah. But you never really had a pullback. You just had kind of had a consolidation. Right. Still a 38% retracements in the 2500, 2531, 2539. Um, so you're talking about a solid 400 practically S&P points that you could pull back. Or Very good points. Um, and, and the other thing I just wanted to say is, sure. look, in the Obama administration, look what you did. So 666 to uh, 2134, this is what you were talking about. Yes. But I always like to say, you have to, in the stock market, you've got to put your politics aside. You've just got to look at the market and say, what is happening? That's why I said, Definitely. Look, at the, look at the chart of the, of the yields. We've been here before. Put the whole story aside and just say, we've been here before and we've recovered. We've done it very nicely. So the only other thing I want you to say is that this is still only in the, not the Dow, but in the S&P, this is still only leg A to the upside if it's an A. Leg A. Watch and out. Since December low, yeah. Watch out. So we're ready out. for some kind of a pullback. Perfect. Well, Basil, <laughs> you got a lot to talk about in your noon Tiger Technicians Hour program, man. We just, that was the beginning of the fun. Yes. I appreciate you filling <laughs> it in as always, Basil. Folks, stay tuned. Live programming all day. And check out that opening call of Basil on the front page of TFNN. Have a great Monday. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Basil.